Okay, let's now talk about uh, global systems, which are the global constellations. We have today four global constellations. What, what does it mean global constellations that are giving services globally? <laughs> We have today four global constellations. What, what does it mean global constellations that are giving services globally? I mean, even though you are in China, in the United States, in Africa, in Europe or whatever, the, you have the global services with the same level of performances everywhere, right? Then we have the GPS, the American one, the Galileo, which is the traditional one starting in 1980, which is 1980, just uh, something like 40 years ago. We have the Galileo European one, the Glonas, the Russian one, and Beidou, the Chinese one. Okay, these are the global constellations that we have today available, open, free users for users. The difference uh, mainly is the, let's say, the origin. Okay, the first three const uh, constellations, China, Russia, and United States, were built, let's say, were mint as a uh, military purposes. Even they have some civilian uh, usages as well, but in the beginning was funded by the military uh, uh, funds. Okay, in the European Union, we did it as a civil, as a civilian usage. The Galileo, even though we have some services, and you may know the PRS service, which is more for military or governmental uh, purposes. More or less, all these constellations are built about thirty satellites. More or less. 24, 26, 27, 30, depending on the deployment phase they have. But there are around 30, 30 satellites. Why? We need at least 30, 27 satellites. We need to ensure at least to have four satellites in view everywhere, every time. Because this is, we will see later on that we'll need at least four satellites to estimate a position and a time. Then the, 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 when we are designing the constellation, one of the key points that we have to take care and put attention is in this geometry, the symmetry of the geometry, in order to make sure that every time and in every uh, moment we have at least four satellites in view. But we don't, we don't have only GNSS or global constellations, we have also what we call regional constellations, or regional systems, let's say. These regional systems today, the most famous in the market today, are the Indian one, the uh, the uh, IRNSS, Indian one, the QZSS, the Japanese, and also the South Korean one, the KPS. These systems are regional in the sense that they are using as well satellites that are orbiting the Earth, but they try to focus the performances on the areas they have been conceived for. For example, the Japanese, they will have some global satellites orbiting the air, but they have also new satellites that are uh, focused on Japan in order to provide much better performances. So we will talk about this later. Then these are the regional systems that we have today in the market. But not only we have global and regional system, we have also what we call SBAS, augmentation systems, which are also regional system, but augmentation system. What is an augmentation system? This is SBAS, which stands for Satellite Based Augmentation System. Today we have different SBAS systems that are already deployed operational in the world. In particular, we have the American WAS, the EGNOS European, SDCM, the Russian one, the Korean one, which is very recently, the Japanese one, the MSAS, and the GAGAN. And these are the uh, SBAS systems that are operational uh, today. But we have already or planning as well to add new SBAS systems. For example, and maybe you know that we are working as well in the uh, ASECNA SBAS for covering the 18 francophone countries in Africa. Uh, this was a phase B that has been finished and the phase CD, the new development phase, will be uh, starting next year. In the, uh, we have also the Australian SPAN, which is uh, also an SBAS and PPP, let's say, system. We have also the, the SBAS for China, the BD SBAS. These systems, at the end, they are built by a ground segment that is built, for example, EGNOS. We have 40 stations that are deployed in Europe. These 40 stations are taking the signals from the GPS and in the future Galileo satellites. And then they are building a kind of uh, corrections or augmentation system, improving the signals of the GPS satellites. I'm going to a geostationary satellite and this geostationary satellite that are, for example, we have three operational. We have two operational today and one in test mode. But thanks to these geo satellites, we are able to receive aviation, receive the corrections. You can see it better here. Then you can see, for example, that you have a GPS constellation that are orbiting around uh, the Earth. And in particular, when these satellites are coming through Europe, the, we are taking the signals thanks to the rims, the stations, and these stations are competing corrections that are being disseminated to a geostationary satellite. And the geostationary satellite 
uh, give the corrections to the air aviation, then in this sense, the airplane will have to compute a PVT solution mixing, let's say, the signals coming from the GPS, but also the correction coming from the geostationary in order to improve the position and then to have a better accuracy. But not only a better accuracy, we'll have as well what we call integrity, availability and continuity. We will build, we will uh, address this in a, in a more detail in the future, but we will compute what we call a protection level to make sure that the error in the position is not going outside this protection level, which is an integrity problem. Even though EGNOS or SVAS system are being meant for, let's say, aviation as a safety critical uh, application, we are we can use as well EGNOS or SVAS system for maritime. In the future, we'll use in EGNOS V3 for maritime. We have some requirements in maritime. And maybe also in the future, in EGNOS Next or EGNOS V4, we will also use for rail away or maybe for autonomous cars or uh, maybe as well for farming. I mean, at the end, EGNOS is there, it's free, and we can use it, and we can have a very good performances today, and then it's very interesting, it's a very interesting system for European uh, users in all the applications. Then, as you see, we have global constellations or systems, regional systems, augmentation systems. Then, uh, with this panorama, let's say, we have something like more than 140 GNSS satellites orbiting the Earth today, uh, accounting for all this global or uh, regional constellation as vast constellation and it is growing and growing and growing. Then today we can have, for example, uh, two particular cases in Munich, for example, in third, we can have, uh, this was, I think, in 2020, two years, the one last, last year, we, we can have a receiver receiving 35 satellites to compute a position. 35 satellites. Or in Tokyo, uh, we have in 2020 as well, something like 56 satellites to compute a position. And now our receiver is able to track, to process something like all these satellites in view at the same time. And you can imagine. Do we need so many satellites to have a position? Maybe not, right? But we have them for free. <laughs>